continuing our unit on transformations, we are going to look at, well, we're going to review what we've already talked about. So remember we the very first day we talked about a translation, which is a slide to the left, slide to the right. Okay, so that was a translation. Yesterday we talked about reflections with the FL meaning the to flip, and we're basically flipping it across the axis or the x-axis or the y-axis and in these reflections remember translations and reflections both the shape is the exact same it has the exact same area all of the side lengths are the same all the measures are the same so these shapes are congruent today we're going to be talking about rotation so if we break it down, we're going to have rota and shun, and that means to spin or roll, and the act of spinning or rolling. And so we're going to be spinning this shape around a single point. Most often the origin, in fact, the only time in eighth grade, up until you get into way later in life, will you be doing some rotations around other points. Um, so we're just going to continue to think of it as we're ro rotating around an, um, a single point. So let's talk about some rotations. So there's a couple parts that we need to discuss. And so I don't want you to think ahead, oh, wait, this is easy. No, okay. So I have to tell you that um, this image doesn't rotate the way I need it to, but it gives you the idea. Okay, so we're going to assume that all rotations occur around the origin. So we're going to begin in quadrant, hmm, that's actually quadrant two. Sorry, we're going to begin in quadrant two. So you can see that this, oh wait, look, it can go either clockwise. Yeah, did you see it? Yeah. Or it can go counterclockwise. Woo! And so there are various degrees of rotation. So remember, 90 degrees is a right angle, and it's going to move it one quadrant over. So if I were to go 90 degrees, that's one. 90 degrees again, that's 2, and 90 degrees again, that's 3. So one quadrant's 90 degrees, another quadrant's 90 degrees, another quadrant's 90 degrees, and another quadrant's 90 degrees. But you need to keep in mind that we're always moving in 90 degree section marks for the most part. Okay, so a 90 degree movement will move it one quadrant, 180 degrees will move it two, 270 will move it three, and then obviously 360 will move it three absolute rotations around. So the next part I'm going to ask you is going to, we're just looking, we're analyzing. It's, it's a little harder when it's a point, but okay. If we rotate point A around the origin and we go clockwise 90 degrees, so we're going to go clockwise 90 degrees. That means we're going to go, or sorry, this one says counterclockwise, I apologize. That means we're going to go to the left 90 degrees. Which quadrant will it land? Remember, this is 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3, and this is quadrant 4. So where is it going to land if it goes 90 degrees counterclockwise? Clockwise, counterclockwise is to the left, 90 degrees is one qu quadrant, so it's going to land in quadrant three. If we decided to go rotate it clockwise this time, 90 degrees, so instead of going counterclockwise, we're now going to go clockwise 90 degrees, what quadrant is it going to land in? Quadrant one. And if we go counterclockwise 180, well, that's to the left one and to the left two, that means it's going to land in quadrant four. And what if I go clockwise 180? Well, it means I go into quadrant one and then I go in, oh wait, I also land in quadrant, wait. So is it the same point if I land in quadrant four both ways? Yes, because it doesn't matter if you turn to the right or turn to the left. If you go 180 degrees, you go all the way around. What happens if I go, <coughs> excuse me? Clockwise 270. Well, clockwise means I'm going to the right. That's 90. That's 180. That's 270. It's going to land in quadrant three. 
What about counterclockwise? 270. I'm going to erase all these marks because it's kind of hard for you guys to see. Counterclockwise means I'm going to go backwards to the left. That's 90. That's 180. This is 270. So it's going to land in quadrant 1. Alright, so then let's look at each quadrant a little bit more closely. So we know that each quadrant has its x and y coordinates. And they're different positive and negative values for each one depending upon the quadrant. So in quadrant 1, every single one of the x and y values are positive, positive. In quadrant 2, all of the values are negative, positive. So all of the x values are negative and all of the y values are positive. In quadrant 3, all of the values are negative, negative. And in quadrant four, all of them are positive negatives. Why are you talking about this? This is ridiculous. We've been doing this forever. Yes, I know. This is important. When we're talking about rotations, we're going to notice something that happens as we move 90 degrees. And we're going to notice something that happens when we go 180 degrees. And we're going to notice things. But the hard part about rotations more so than anything else is figuring out where my shape lands. And if my shape lands in quadrant 4, then I have to remember that no matter what, that its x value is always going to be positive and its y value is always going to be negative. If after my rotations, my shape lands in quadrant 3, I've got to remember that my x value is always negative and my y value is always negative. So it's important. We're going to look closely at these coordinates, but it's important to notice what are the x and the y values? Okay. And we always have to pay attention that our x and our y coordinates match the coordinates of our, um, the coordinate we're in. So let's talk about, hey, are these resulting shapes similar or congruent before we actually start doing it? Remember, congruent means that it's the exact same shape, the exact same angle measures, the exact same side lengths. It has the exact same perimeter. It's got the exact same area. Everything is exactly the same in every way, shape, and form. Similar shapes have the exact same angle measures, but they have different side lengths. Remember, the side lengths are proportional. That means also their perimeters are different and their areas are different. So, after we rotate a shape, is it similar or congruent? It is congruent. All right, so let's look at these. What's happening to the coordinates? So we know it's gonna, the shape's not going to change, but let's look at the coordinates. Okay, we're going to say point A begins in quadrant 1 at the coordinates 5, 2. We're going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. When I rotated it counterclockwise 90 degrees, look at the coordinates. Those coordinates are negative 2, 5. So is there anything that has happened? If you notice, our x and our y flip-flop. Do you see that? And we have to match the quadrant that we landed in. Quadrant 2 has all of the x values being negative and all the y values being positive. So the x values here flip-flopped, so the x became the y, and the y became the x, and then we have to make sure that our resulting image, our resulting landing coordinates, ended up matching the quadrant that it landed in. Let me say that again. We flip-flop the x with the y and the y with the x, and then we make sure that the quadrant we land in matches its negative and positive values. x and y values swapped, and because it landed in quadrant 2, the x is going to be negative and the y is going to be positive. Now, for the remainder of class, 
you are going to do an activity where you're going to be pushing a push pin in through the ground. You're going to be working on some things. Um, you need to be working together and getting the work done and understanding what's happening with rotations uh, and making sure that you're getting your work done. If you have any questions, remember there's homework on Canvas. You can rewatch this video again, um, but please work together and get your work done.